Hello and welcome to this webinar on unseen poetry analysis for years 10 and 11. We are looking at a specific poem for this unseen poetry analysis. We're looking at Branch Library by Edward Hirsch and we have three specific learning aims. We want to understand the poem in terms of its structure and its meaning or the themes. We want to understand the poem in terms of the imagery and language and we also want to understand the effects on readers. Now I know for unseen poetry it's a really good idea to have a look at the po poem first because we only have five minutes. Here's the poem, pause the webinar and read through the poem. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to read it. Now, when you're reading an unseen poem for an exam, for an assignment, for homework, it is really nerve wracking. The ideal scenario is really to read the poem three times. Read the poem once. Is there anything that you don't understand? Are there bits that are a bit strange or a bit unfamiliar, a bit weird? And does that matter? Can you work it out or will it stop you from understanding the poem? The second time you read it, try and really work out what you understand, get a really strong sense of what the poem is and what it's about. And then finally, analyze it in real detail. Now to analyze in detail, I would suggest that you use five steps that are called smile. So every time you see unseen poetry, smile. And what does SMILE stand for? SMILE stands for structure, meaning, imagery, language, and effect and environment. We'll go through each of this for each of these for this unseen poetry poem by Edward Hirsch. So structure, when you have an unseen poem, think about the structure. Structure means the beginning, the middle, and the end. So what is the title? How does it start? How does it end? How does it develop? Look at the stanzas and the line lengths. Are there regular line lengths? Um, is there angemon where the line is continued? Is there chasura where it stops in the middle of the line? Is there interesting punctuation? There's some separated lines. What about rhythm and rhyme? Are there patterns of rhythm and rhyme? And what about the viewpoint? Who's the speaker and who are they addressing? So when we look at this poem, Branch Library by Edward Hirsch, we can see the beginning is, I wish I could find that skinny long beaked boy. It's a sense of longing, a sense of admiration, adoration. And the word library is really important because you have this sense that this skinny long beaked boy is this chance occurrence in a library. When we look at the end, it ends with radiating heat, singing with joy. There's a sense of emancipation or freedom because the library somehow has brought joy to this skinny, long-beaked boy. And you can also see that this is written in couplets. Each of the stanzas is just two lines long, although it doesn't seem to be regular rhyme and rhythm. So it's, it seems as if there's a pair, these perfect pairing, maybe the boy in the library or the observer and the boy, this perfect pair together. Then with unseen poetry, when you're smiling, the M stands for meaning or messages. Another word, way of saying this is themes. What themes or issues and ideas are being explored? And maybe there are neon lines, maybe three, really vivid, really powerful phrases that really stick out to reveal the themes and the purposes why this has been written. So when you look at this poem, Branch Library, it, some of those words are he spent the Sabbath flying between the wobbly stacks. So that that phrase, he spent the Sabbath flying, this idea of this young boy on a special day is really going through the library with this anticip anticipation and excitement. And also when it says, I give anything to find that birdie boy again, bursting out the dusty blue afternoon, that really is about joy and passion and that really is about the excitement of learning that this boy this figure embodies the eye for smile is about imagery now imagery are the deliberate techniques that a writer is using so the imagery is metaphors onomatopoeia personification exaggeration similes sensory description and sound effects and when we look at this the whole thing seems to be an extended metaphor is a long beaked boy he's perching in the branches of the library you can see the branch library is a play on words he's flying he's nesting he's scratching he's scrawling we've got this idea that this is a boy who's kind of collecting these scraps of information as if he's a bird really collecting sticks on which to build a beautiful next nest then the l 
for smile is language. Now, are there words that link together or contrast? Is the vocabulary simple? Is it written in past tense? And when we look at this poem, you can see the words that link together are all about this boy as if he were a bird, as we've said about the beak and the flying. But we've also got words that contrast like dusky and bursting. So although the afternoon is dusky and the, the library is tattered the boys bursting with radiant heat the delight of, of learning has really captivated him finally the e for smile is effect and environment what's the overall purpose what's the background or the context when we look at this this con the, the overall purpose seems to be to really give us an admiration for this boy so was it written in a time where learning was scarce or children didn't want to learn or maybe perhaps things didn't seem sacred, the books were not looked after. Was it written behind this time? And the writer is then celebrating. Right, what next? Well, the next step for you could be go back to the beginning of this webinar and have a go at writing out your own unseen poetry analysis using my notes. Thank you for joining me and goodbye. <laughs>